Hello, um, uh, my name is James Cummings, a wait starter timer. There we are. Uh, uh, and um, uh, I'm from Newcastle University, as uh, uh, said. Um, Alex and Diane and I are going to present some case studies we're working on on a project on HDR to TEI conversions and how we can make those better and easier for um, small cultural institutions to uh, 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 undertake. This was funded by an NEH, AHRC, New Directions for Digital Scholarship in Cultural Institution uh, grant. Um, and it's not just us that work on it. Obviously, there's lots of other people. Um, we're basically going to talk about three case studies. Uh, Alex is going to talk about the Gertrude Bell Archive and what it's doing. Diane's going to talk about a couple of projects at Bucknell University. And I'm going to talk about a joint project that we have on the records for early English drama. And these are looking at different ways of using HTR and on different types of material. Um, so I'm part of the Newcastle team. I work in the library. I'm one of the archivists there. And our case study relates to the archive of Gertrude Bell. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about her here because we've not got time. But if anyone wants to talk to me more about how problematic Gertrude Bell is after this, please do come and talk to me. Um, she was an archaeologist in um, the early 20th century who traveled extensively through the Middle East. And in the end, her knowledge of the peoples and languages and places there uh, led to her becoming a diplomat and was um, instrumental in the formation of what became the Kingdom of Iraq in 1921. So we've had transcriptions of her letters online for... Uh, since the 1990s, and we've recently undergone a project to revamp that website, um, put the scans online as well, and make it um, an improved experience for researchers because the website was very dated. So we are a small cultural institution, even though we sit within the university, um, and we were kind of novices to this work when we came to it, and, and I think that's been quite useful because our hurdles have probably been similar hurdles to the people who the workflows are targeted at. So as we went through the HTR and TEI process, we've been trying to simplify the process into ways that we can um, explore the simpler tools, things that are more accessible, things that are quick to pick up. Um, and we've been hugely indebted to the knowledge of others as we do that, um, and the wider community as well. We've spoken to a number of people who I know are here this week. Um, so as part of the workflows, we've obviously broken it down into individual sections, as I'm sure you all understand. Um, and we've been working through those processes. We've been using Transcribus for the HTR. <clears throat> But also we tried to use the tagging that's the screen grab from Transcribus with some of our bespoke tags in as well. Um, and we found that slightly problematic at times. Um, so we are now about to embark on the next stages where we are currently converting the data um, out of Transcribus into TEI. And we're gonna run a trial as to whether we wanna use leaf or um, oxygen for the next stages. And then eventually we'll be publishing on, this is our new, um, online image viewer called Page Turners, which is a, uh, an adapted version of the Mirador IIIF viewer. And we're exploring how we might be able to pull the TEI transcripts through a IIIF manifest into this viewer. So that's our case study. Oh, so, uh, right, okay. Thank you. Um, there we go. Uh, my contribution, whoop, I just lost my, my okay. My contribution to the Evolving Hands project is to evaluate different tools that can help integrate HDR and OCR into editorial pipelines that support different scholarly textual editions and collections. I work at a small university where faculty, staff, and students are engaged in exciting, ambitious projects, but we suffer from a significant lack of human resources. There are really only two options. Either we tell scholars that the university doesn't have the bandwidth to support them, and sadly many schools like ours do have to say that, or we can get cr uh, creative and figure out how to do a better job of streamlining the editorial, production, and publication workflows that they require. At the same time, I'm collaborating on a Mellon-funded digital publishing cooperative project with James and Susan Brown that aims to address these challenges that are faced by scholars at more institutions. Uh, the linked editing academic framework supports editorial teams working with complex data sets who need support for scholarly production. LEAF en encourages collaborative scholarship through adoption of standards like TEI and community developed software like you know, Islandora. We aim to help them take their data from digitization to availability on the semantic web. 
um, the piece that was missing was how to get the kind of manuscript pages and poor scanned print publications into machine readable format so that they could then be uploaded, encoded, and entity tagged. If we could integrate the kind of HTR and OCR work that we saw being done through tools like Transcribus, then we would be able to offer a full series of uh, workflows and recipes that would take editors through the whole production process. Two projects at Bucknell pro provided the tests we needed to see how well we could develop this approach and which were the inspiration for the leaf turning engine tool, which optimizes importing machine readable text like the output from Transcribus into leaf for encoding in LeafWriter. Uh, the first project is the Suzette Project, a French language digital edition of a 19th century French uh, general curriculum textbook. We worked from a bad PDF scan of a microfilm available online from the BNF and used Transcribus in both the desktop application and the web interface to transcribe and generate machine readable versions of 500 pages that we were able to proof, correct for errors, and then export to an XML format, run transformations in, in Oxygen, and encode in LeafWriter for semantics and entity tagging. We couldn't have undertaken this project if it weren't for this streamlined onboarding process. Um, there we go. Uh, the second is the Heresies Project, an online resource that we're developing from the transformative radical second wave feminist journal, um, the, the Heresies Journal, a complex series of 27 uh, issues that weave text and image together in ways that make traditional OCR transcription impossible. We're experimenting with different tools and platforms like Transcribus and Kraken and are hoping to try some of the ones we're learning about the, at this conference in order to proceed through the established workflow to make the hard to find work of feminist criticism available to multiple audiences. Me again. Um, uh, so we've seen uh, manuscripts with the Gertrude Bell archive and uh, strange forms of text uh, with the, the various Bucknell projects. Um, we're also doing a joint project, which is on the records of early English drama, which is a decades long project where they're going around transcribing uh, records of performance and uh, music. Uh, uh, up to 1642. Um, and they've published uh, 23 collections in 34 volumes, which means there's now this big legacy uh, uh, set of data of around 20,000 uh, uh, pages. The uh, volumes they're doing now, the collections they're doing now, they're publishing online in TEI. Um, but there's this, this long you know, history of, of all of this stuff that they've published before, and it's edited snippets of English and Latin that they've decomposed contextualized from the manuscript to say, look, here is a bit where uh, some performance or drama or something like that happened. And one of the interesting things about it is that uh, all of the uh, uh, Latin and Middle English um, abbreviations are expanded and they use formatting to do this, which isn't picked up by normal OCR. <laughs> that is on. <laughs> yeah, somebody turned it off. Um, uh, this is an example of, of one of their printed volumes. As, as you can see, uh, you know, it, it uses, you know, marginal notes, line numbers, has uh, um, accounting data, financial data. But also, uh, if you look at uh, uh, words like uh, a comor comor uh, comorantibus here, you have those bits that are in italic that are there to indicate uh, that that wasn't there in the original, that there was a medieval uh, 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 abbreviation marker there and they have expanded the text. Um, that is intellectual content that we don't want to lose, so we want to uh, transform that. Of course, um, OCR just loses that. So what we do in Transcribus is a cipher-based system where we represent those italic letters in uh, as other characters that won't appear in these manuscripts. So we've used currency symbols from around the world that did not exist at this period. Um, uh, and then with some clever XSLT on the results of the, the TI that we get out, uh, we uh, change things back. So an IE abbreviation is there as a euro pound in the uh, uh, transcribus output. And we, we change that back into uh, 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 an IE, but with markup around it to say that it's an expansion. 
Um, all of that's very interesting, uh, but really what this project is about is, is about the planned outputs of, of how-tos, a few XSLT uh, scripts, uh, documentation, case studies, and uh, training materials, and we're trying to make that available to small cultural institutions who don't have the um, resources, perhaps, that we have and aren't mainstream in attending DH conferences, etc. So thank you to everybody. The slides are available there. You can contact uh, uh, us if you want to talk more about that or about EFE as well. Thank you. Thank you.